how to make this lovely a-line dress with flare sleeve and crinoline it's a cascading sleeve and it's very simple to make if this is something you would like to learn kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial thank you to make this a-line dress i've folded my fabric into a four i'm cutting both the front and back together and then the measurement that i use to fold this fabric is the largest measurement which in this case is my hip measurement so i just added one and a half inches seam allowance because it's just going to be like a straight dress so i have around 14 inches or thereabouts like that on this folded into four and then the length that i use for this is the length of my dress so in my case it's 40 inches then i had a two inches allowance for hemming it so i have 42 inches as the length so now the next thing i'll do now is to start taking my measurements you can actually call this a form of a kimono where you have your sleeve cut together with the main body but i don't have that much fabric so i'm going to be having my sleeve separately so for my starting point here i'm going to measure my shoulder which is 16 inches divided by two and that's going to give me eight inches so i have eight inches there and then i'll go down by like one inch for my shoulder slope and then for my starting point i'm going to measure my ham hole which is nine inches then i'm going to take my waist measurements and the waist i'm working with is 16 inches and then i'm going to take my hip line measurement so the hip line i'm working with is 25 inches so all of these measurements now i'm going to make it into a straight line then i'm going to try to make it as good as possible because this print actually has a lot of color so i hope you can see what i'm doing well So these are my measurements this is my ham hole line this is my waistline and this is my hip line so for my neckline i'm not going to be adding a zipper to this so i'm going to make the neckline wide enough for the head to go through but of course it's not going to be too wide so for my neck width i'm going to be working with a neck width of three and a half inches and then for the neck depth i'm working with a neck depth of one and a half inches for the front for the back and then for the front i'll go as deep as around seven inches because i want it to be easy to wear so now using my curve i'm going to connect my back neckline as seen and then for my front also it's going to be a v neckline but i don't want it too sharp so i'm also using a curve to have that slightly v curve that i have there okay so for my ham hole, I'm going to take that shoulder measurement on my ham hole line also, which is 8 inches, so that I can have my ham hole line. And then I'm going to find the midpoint of that and then go in by half an inch on the midpoint so that I can draw my ham hole curve. And then here I'm working with a bust measurement of 40. Two inches so 42 inches vary by first going to give me 10 and half then i'm adding half inch for ease so that's 11 inches but this is going to be a free dress it's not going to be too tight so now the next thing is for me to take my curve and draw my ham hole curve linking those three points together you know how to draw your basic bodies i'm sure this is not going to be so difficult so the next measurement i'm taking is my waist measurement the waist i'm working with is 36 inches there by far is going to give me nine so i can add half an inch to that for this also so i'm going to mark nine and a half here and then the hip i'm working with is 46 inches 46 inches divided by 4 is going to give me 11 and a half so i'll make that 12 inches also and then i'm going to connect from my waist to the hip and then all the way to the strip to the neckline so i'm going to be adding an allowance of one and a half inches each to this And then I'm just going to connect it straight down. Like I said, it's just going to be like a straight dress. It's not going to be too free or too big. Okay. 
So I have this now. Then I'm going to cut this half. But before I cut it out, I need to draw my shoulder slope. So I have my shoulder slope like this. And then I can cut out my pattern. So for the neckline, you need to cut out the back first. Remember the back is shorter than the front. Before you remove your back and then you can cut out your front. I'm just opening it on this side and then from here I can shape out my side. And then also here I'm going to cut out my ample. I'm cutting out the front and back ample together. So this is what I have now. I'm going to remove my back and then cut out the front neckline. So these actually have an external facing. So you can use a different fabric for this, but I'm going to be using the same fabric that I'm using for my bodies for my facing. So after this, now we need to fold our fabric again to cut out this facing. For the dress so I'm trying to arrange my neckline well before I cut okay so this is my front neckline and this is my back neckline so the next thing I'm doing now is to cut out facing for this and then I'm going to cut out my sleeve. So cutting a facing is actually simple. You just need to fold your fabric into two like this. And then you place your neckline on it. Remember, you have to place the fold point against each other. And then after placing it on each other like this, I'm going to cut out my neckline. Exactly what I have there. So I'm cutting it out. And then also I'll cut out my shoulder slope. So now on the shoulder you need to note where you want your facing to stop because you're going to be needing it for the front also because it's an external facing. So they have to be on the same point. So now I have three and a half inches here. So I'm going to be using that exact three and a half inches for the front also. Okay, so after having it like that, I can remove my main fabric and then I'm going to be measuring around three inches including allowance so by the time i sew it on the neckline and then i turn i sew it on the hem i'll be left with two inches or three and a half inches depending on how wide you want your facing to be and then i'm just going to mark that round to form my facing and then i'll cut it out so the same thing that i've done here is what i'm going to be doing on the on the for the back neck for the front neckline also okay okay so you can just shape it like this but you can just shape it from where this stops where the shoulder slope stops and then cuff it to meet the neckline like this whichever one you choose is fine so once i have this now i'm going to bring my back neckline and then i'll place it on it so you have to have exactly what you have on your neckline remember i said this is going to be an external facing so you need to get it right so now you can see that we have our exact neckline here so this what i have done here now is the same process i'm going to go through to get the facing for the front so i've gone ahead to cut out the facing for my front also i just placed the front neckline on it then i shaped off the neckline then i measured the length that i want for my facing then i connected it back to my shoulder point so now if i place it on the front part now I need to have exactly what I have on my neckline okay so I also went ahead to cut out my basic sleeve so if you don't know how to do that I have a tutorial on how to cut the basic sleeve already on the channel so you should check that out so this is the facing for the back so the modification I'm going to do on my 
basic sleeve now is to give it like a cascading effect and to do this on the center fold of the sleeve remember this is the center of the sleeve if you open it this is what you're going to have so i've cut the two sleeves and then on the center fold of the sleeve i'm going to go upwards by around four inches you can do more you can do less depending on what you want so now after going upwards by four inches i'm going to be connecting it to my hem okay so before i connect it i'll remove the one inch allowance that i had it to my sleeve to sew it and then i'm going to connect it like that you can connect it in a straight form or a slanting form you can use a curve or you use your free hand like i am doing so after connecting it like that i'm going to shape this off okay so you can see that i have a part longer than the other okay so this is what i have so on this part now i'm going to be adding a flare to it so to know the radius of my flare i need to take the measurements of that point okay so i have around 16 and a half inches or 17 inches so that is the measurement i'm going to use to cut my full flare so i'm using a full flare so to cut a full flare i'm going to be working with 16 and a half inches divided by 6.28 and then i'm going to decide the length that i want my flare to be okay so i have used that measurement to cut out a flare it reaches the degree flare of length around 5 inches with allowance okay so now you can actually use a 720 degree flare but of course that is going to consume more fabric and i don't have much fabric because i'm going to be using the same ankara to line this flare because it's going to show by the time you raise your hand so i don't want i don't have enough fabric for a 720 degree flare that's why i'm using just 360 degree flare but what i did was I added to my radius instead of using the actual 16 and a half inches i added extra five inches to it so that i can have a wider radius then i can just split it so that i can give me that flounce effect a bit so now i have cut this house and i cut four two for each sleeve that's one for main fabric and one for lining so now to prepare this now i'm going to go ahead now and add interface to this before i had my crinoline to it so I've gone ahead to add interfacing to all of my flares, a soft gum stitch. So I added it to both the lining and the fabric so that I can strengthen the fabric because of the crinoline that I'm adding. So I'm adding this, this is about two and a half inches or so. Okay, three inch. This is three inches crinoline. And then I'm just going to be sewing it around it. So to sew it now, I just need to place my main fabric against my lining like this. And then on the tips, I'm going to place my crinoline like this, and then I'll just sew it around. So when sewing it, do not drag it because it's actually elastic. So you don't want it like this. Just let it follow its course. It's going to follow as you're doing it because it's stretchy. So you just place it around and then you sew all around. So I'm going to do this now and bring it back to show us. So I've gone ahead to add my crinoline around it as you can see. Now I'm going to turn it out and then give it a good press. So if you cannot iron it, you can also top stitch it. So you top stitch it. To top stitch it, you just fold it towards where you sew the crinoline and then you just top stitch on it. So it's going to help it to relax over. I'm just going to iron it and then bring it back to structure. So I've gone ahead to turn it and then I've ironed it flat. You can see how flat this is looking. So I'm going to set it aside and work on my main bodies. So for my main bodies, I joined my facing and my main fabric separately. And then I just place them on each other. So watch how I place this. I place the right side of my facing on the wrong side of my fabric. So that by the time I sew it around and I turn it, the right side is going to be showing on the right side so you just place your facing the wrong side of your face of your you you place the right wrong side of your fabric you place the right side of your facing sorry on the wrong side of your fabric like this and then i sew it around the neckline 
okay the first thing i did was to join my facing and my main fabric on the shoulder separately you can see they are separate this is the main fabric this is the facing and then i just joined it on the shoulder separately and then i place the right side of my facing on the wrong side of my fabric then i sew it round so after sewing it round i'm going to notch it and then bring out my facing to the right side now so you can see that it's going to be on the right side and then i'm going to hem it like this and then stitch it round so after doing this now i'm going to sew it together on the sides i'm going to join it on the side and then i'm going to work on my sleeve so i'm going ahead to turn it to the right side now and then i pinned it round so i'm going to sew it now and bring it back to show us i'm going ahead to sew it together on the neckline you can see and then i sew it also on the side so turning it out my dress is almost ready what you just have to do now is fix your sleeve so i fixed one of the sleeves this is what the sleeve is looking like and because we trimmed it you can see that it is higher on the center front compared to what we have on the hem side so it's going to give you that effect there so now the, to sew the sleeve what you just need to do is close your basic sleeve here with the allowance remember this is my seam allowance so i'm going to close it with the one inch seam allowance then after closing it i'll go ahead now and sew my my flare to the hem of my sleeve but remember that the flare is caught in excess so i'm going to have excess so you can see the excess that i have so this excess now i'm going to pleat it round this sleeve as you can see here you can see that it is pleated in bits so i just pleated it around the sleeve then after pleating it around the sleeve the sleeve is ready so what you just need to do now is to top stitch on it so before you top stitch it ideally you weave it or you turn the edge with bias so after weaving it neatly i just decided to top stitch on it so that it can just the seam allowance can just go inside because i don't want it to be showing by the time i raise my hand so you top stitch using a matching color of thread and then you just sew the sleeve to your handful just like i have done and your dress is ready so now i'm going to go ahead and do this for the other sleeve also then i'm going to hem it on the lower part then hang it on the mannequin so that i can see what this looks like okay so this is what our dress is looking like you can see the external facing that we have there you can just add stones or beads to beautify the dress and then this is our sleeve you can see that it is higher on the center part and then it just goes down to the waist and the pleats just give it that folding effect that we're looking for it's a knee length dress and it's really simple to make and also very beautiful i hope you enjoyed making this tutorial with me if you enjoyed this let us know in the comment section like comment and subscribe to our channel and i'll see you in the next one bye Bye.